So you have the best gaming CPU in the market, the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. Yet, you're not quite satisfied with it. You want to get more out of it, make it run even better. Well, this is the right video for you. So it is actually possible to increase the FPS you're getting, reduce the temperature of the CPU and make it draw less power than it is right now. Actually, all at the same time, if we set it properly. So welcome back at the PSUs and here we are with the full undervolting guide for this Ryzen 7, where I'm also gonna cover how to achieve a proper and safe overclock. Now, before we get started, a few disclaimers. First of all, this is gonna work for every single motherboard out there, no matter how cheap it is, it's still gonna work. You can use an A620, B650, X670, or the brand new X870, B850, etc. The brand of the motherboard is also not gonna matter. So you can have an Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, or ASRock motherboard, or even a Biostar, and it's gonna work still. Now, before we get started, one last thing, okay? Just promise me this, we need to have an agreement. So if the video ends up being helpful, so you watch it all and the performance of your CPU actually improves, you will drop a like and a sub to support me, okay? If we have that agreement, we can get started. Let's go in the BIOS, I'll see you there. Here we are in the BIOS. Now I apologize for the ultra wide monitor, but it's my main setup, which show you how much I care about this CPU. What you wanna do first of all, is go into the advanced section in your BIOS, which is what we see here in my MSI motherboard, okay? Now the names are gonna be a bit different if you have different brands of motherboard, but I'm gonna try to tell you the different naming. And if it's slightly different, just cross reference with my CPU undervolting playlist, and you'll be fine. In this tutorial, I'm gonna have two different settings. Well, actually three. So the first one is gonna be a dynamic option. The one which I think probably most of you should copy. And it's gonna just keep the original behavior of the CPU, but make it run better, cooler, more FPS, etc. Second option is gonna be the static. Static is what I personally run, is what I prefer. But objectively, if you're doing it for efficiency, it's not gonna have the best performance out of the three but it's gonna be the most efficient one. And again, what I like the most. The third option, which is not really an option, is gonna be just discussing how you can actually do this to push the chip beyond stock, okay? And do a proper overclock. Let's get started with the actual dynamic option. So you wanna go into settings and into advanced, and now you will find a tab called AMD overclocking. Now accept this warning and just go ahead until you find the precision boost overdrive. You wanna put it into advanced. Now PBO limits, you wanna put this into motherboard, okay? So this is gonna tailor your limits to your motherboard or you can just unlock them all. Or if you want, you can put them on manual and you can input here some values which we will see later, okay? But I recommend just putting them on motherboard. We wanna go all the way down to core optimizer, select all cores. We then wanna put it on negative and we wanna put them all on minus 20. Now, if you just wanna copy my settings and just don't think about it, just copy this. And now you can basically save your settings and go out if you just want to undervolt. This is how you undervolt and uh, you can close the video, drop a like and a sub. However, there's much more to it. So the 9800X 3D is insanely well binned. So every single sample I've had can do minus 30. And now the bigger this number, the better it's gonna be, okay? So if you can get this to minus 40, it would be amazing. But the minus 40 for me, it's running on a single sample of the ones I have. So I recommend you do 20 if you wanna be safe. But if you feel like doing pro some proper stress testing, which you should always do, just put 30, okay? On the contrary, if you're very unlucky and 20 is not working for you, which I don't quite believe, you may wanna put 15, okay? Or 10, but uh, genuinely, these CPUs are so good, every single one of them is gonna do 15. Okay, but again, I recommend you put 20. Now we are not discussing performance improvement in the first part, okay? So this is a pure undervolt. Now let's show you how to do the static option, okay? For a static option, go into the overclocking tab, which is also called AI tweaker tab, or tweaker tab, or tuning tab, depending on your BIOS. Go into there, put it into expert, and now we wanna go on CPU core ratio, okay? And we are changing this. So if you are doing this just for efficiency, okay, you wanna put 50, right there. So put 50, then go all the way down until you find something that's called CPU vCore, which may also be called CPU core voltage, like in my case, or a variety of different similar names, and you wanna put it into 
manual or override mode, depending on your motherboard. And now over here, if you're doing this just exclusively for efficiency, you wanna put 1.1. Again, this is a safe setting, okay? Now, if you wanna just copy it, you're doing this for efficiency, um, we are basically losing 200 megahertz, but we are keeping our CPU stable all the time at five gigahertz. And it's gonna run a lot, lot cooler, a lot quieter. It's gonna be just overall better, but we can tweak this a lot better. So this time it's a bit more complicated. We are playing with two different values. So the first value is the core clock. And now the higher the core clock, the higher the performance, okay? And the second value is the core voltage. And hear me out, the lower the core voltage, the better. Because if it's lower, you're running quieter, you're not hitting power limit. There are various advantages to it. So what you wanna do is, in my opinion, find a core clock which you like, and then find the appropriate core voltage. In my case, I recommend the following, okay? So if you want pure efficiency, for this architecture, the sweet spot is 50. It's also what Brian from Tech City recommends, it's 50. But if you want stock performance, it's gonna be 52. Well, to be precise, it would be 52.5 if you want true stock, but 52 is what we're working with. So for the appropriate core clock, you want to find the voltage. So for 50, we said it's 1.1. However, it's not actually 1.1 because if you're lucky, you may be able to get this lower. So most CPUs can do 1.050 and be stable. I know it seems low, but it's what I tested, okay? I haven't really seen lower than this properly stable. On average, I think the, the average CPU can do 1.1 if you wanna be really safe, but if you don't wanna be really safe, safe I just mean stability-wise, okay? You can do 1.075 and it's gonna work on most CPUs for 50. But again, 1.1, just be safe. If you're a bit unlucky and this is crashing for you, you wanna bump this up a little bit to 1.125. This is gonna work, I can pretty much confidently say, for everybody. Then of course, if you're just 0.1% unluckiest person ever, you can just, you know, just do this, be super safe, but you're losing a bit of the advantages here. So going back to us, if we wanna do 52, the values I see working usually for the average CPU is gonna be 1.175, just to be safe. Just, we are being really safe, but genuinely 1.15 is gonna work for a lot of you. But again, if you're unlucky, all the way up to 1.2 is gonna be what you're gonna need for 52. And this is gonna be it. Of course, just if, it's, if the PC is crashing, just increase the voltage, okay? Like it's gonna be fine, it's simple. You can basically close the video because we covered also the static option. But if you wanna stay, we are talking a bit about power limits, performance improvements, and how you can actually uh, make this run the best you can, okay? So first off, regardless of which profile you choose, so static or dynamic, um, make sure you have your XMP enabled. Now you wanna test this separately, of course, but make sure you have it enabled. Now with Ryzen 9000, we have decoupled FCLK, okay? It's, without getting into too much complex stuff, you can basically go on FCLK frequency and uh, put it on 2067 and it's gonna work for every single CPU and it's free performance and you are literally losing nothing. So just enable your XMP, put the FCLK to 2067, you're gonna be fine. So this is just quick advice, or you can just put it to 2000 and then set it one to one to one, okay? And it's gonna be fine. But this is just a little tip. Now, let's go back to the actual dynamic option from the beginning. And let's say you wanna actually overclock this thing, okay? I am covering this in this video because I see that a lot of people watch other tutorials and they are just recommending settings which I don't agree with, okay? So here's how I would do it if I had to overclock it. We go precision boost overdrive, we go curve optimizer, we go all cores, minus 20, let's say, okay? Now people do this. They do motherboard limits, and then they, they do CPU boost clock override enabled, and they give it plus 200 megahertz, and then they put manual on the scalar and put 10. Okay, so this is overvolting your CPU. This is just bad for long term, okay? Because the scalar is overvolting, it's basically putting back the voltage which you're taking off with the curve optimizer. So if you really wanna do this and wanna just overclock your CPU dynamically, just please, just do 5X if you really wanna push it, but really 1X is gonna be fine, okay? The scalar doesn't matter. And then just put 200 here, okay, sure. 
So this is, if you want to just do a dynamic overclock, is what, how I recommend you do it. Now, PBO limits, if you want to put them manually, you can basically input here, those values right here, okay? So this is basically maximum performance one. This is the most efficient ones. The ones I personally recommend are 95 watts for efficiency, okay, or 65, one of the two. And then if you don't care about the temperature, you have just very good cooling systems, these two. But the motherboard is also going to be fine uh, overall. Okay, now before closing off, since you're still here, you're probably, I don't know, my best viewer. Thank you, by the way. We're just showing you a static overclock, how you should do it. Sweet spot is 54. Don't push more. Trust me, 54 is good. If you really want to push it, 54.5 is going to be the best. But I recommend 54. Higher you're losing, just uh, efficiency is going out of the window. And then the value I recommend for V-Core is going to be 1.225. This is going to work for most people, but... Uh, better be safe here maybe go 1.25 this is gonna work for you you know don't need to go higher the only thing you may want to change is the load line calibration if your motherboard has it you basically just put it in between in my case is under digital power we are putting it in the middle so mode 5 or mode 4 is gonna be plenty fine but you don't need to change this for most people okay just put the voltage you're gonna be fine. And with this, we finally finished the maxi tutorial for the undervolting, which is probably the longest on the channel. So if you watch this far, remember your promise, drop a like and subscribe. And if anything isn't clear, drop a comment and I will answer, okay? See you guys in another video, maybe, if you wanna see the PC builds I do and the other stuff I do. Bye-bye.